Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So what we're looking at here is a past paper that is free of charge from Revision Village. Uh, please, excuse me, please click the link in the comments and in the description below if you'd like to see exactly where this paper comes from. This is uh, available free, you don't need a login or anything to see this paper. And what I'm going to do in the next few videos is go through this paper one question at a time. This is for the IB Standard Level Applications and Interpretations course. There is not much out there, so I thought I'd make a video for yourselves. Please consider uh, liking and subscribing. That goes a long way to helping the channel grow. Right, let's get started. So, our very first question is on box and whisker diagrams, on box plots. So, we are given a box plot to look at, and our first thing to do is write down the median tomato sales. So, we need to take the value of the little middle blah, of the middle line, okay, of the box there. So, this line here is going to be 41, 42. So, our answer for this will be. 42 kilograms, so 42 kg, like so. The minimum is represented by our whisker at the bottom, so this part here, so that's going to be 11, 12, 13, so that's going to be 13 kilos. And then to work out the interquartile range, it's the range of our box in the middle, so let's count this carefully. We have 26 at the bottom and 50 at the top. So we do 50 minus 26, giving us the value of 24 kilos, like so. So a nice straightforward way to start the paper. Now we need to write down the number of days the tomato sales will be between 42 and 50 kilograms. Notice that part of our diagram is this part here, which is between our median and our upper quartile. So the median represents 50% of the data and the upper quartile represents 75% of the data. So in between that is going to be 25% of the data. So we have 25% of the data. Now, because our data is over 100 days, we're going to find 25% of 100, which is a nice easy calculation. That's going to be 25. And in a similar way, between 26 kilos and 55 kilos, well, that's between our lower quartile, so this is our LQ, and our maximum point. So the lower quartile represents 25% of the data, the maximum represents 100% of the data, so the difference between these two things here is 75%. And so for this question, we need to find 75% of 100, which is also a very nice value to find. That's going to be equal to 75 Okay, this is a very nice question to get on the start of a paper. Now, another day of sales were recorded, and it was very, very quiet, and only eight kilograms of tomatoes were sold, which is right down here. And we have to determine if it's an outlier. Now, there is a formula you need to know for this question, which is to find outliers, you need to find, first of all, 1.5 times the interquartile range, and then we look at the distance between the lower quartile and that distance and the upper quartile and that distance and see if this number here, eight kilos, falls between them. So let's work out 1.5 times interquartile range. So the interquartile range we worked out was 24. So we do 1.5 times 24, which you can use a calculator for. That's equal to 36. And now we take our lower quartile, which we worked out already, that was 26. So we do 26 minus 36, which is equal to minus 10. And then we take the upper quartile, which is 50 plus 36, which is equal to 86. And then we test 
between minus 10 and 86, if this number here, 8, lies between them, and you'll find that it lies in here. Okay, so it's between these two numbers, therefore it is not an outlier. So we can then say not out like, like so. So eight marks to that question, I think that is quite generous, but you want to take all the marks you can get when it's an IB exam. Okay, the mark scheme is given here, so you can pause the video, have a look yourself. And here is the mark scheme for this part as well. Feel free to pause. Okay, question two is a probability question. So a bag contains six white and four orange table tennis balls. Jack selects a ball at random from the bag, and then afterwards, he selects a ball at random from the bag. So to highlight this, this is without replacement. So the ball that he has chosen is not put back into the bag. So when we come to do our tree diagram, we need to take that into account. Now, whenever I do a tree diagram, I do not like to simplify my fraction. And you'll see why now. So the probability of getting a white ball on the first pick is going to be 6 out of 10. So let me put that in a different color. 6 out of 10. And to get an orange table tennis ball, it'll be 4 out of 10. Okay, so that's the start of our situation. So let's keep going. So then we want to choose a white or an orange or a white or an orange on our second pick. And this is where writing it as an unsimplified fraction really, really helps. So if we have 6 out of 10 here, Think about we've chosen a white ball, it's been removed, so we're now left with five white balls, and then we've got one ball less in the bag, therefore there's going to be nine balls. In fact, for each of these situations, we're going to write this out of nine. Because once you've chosen a ball, whether it's white or orange, you're left then with nine left. <coughs> now, we also know that if we've chosen the white ball, we've gone down from 6 to 5, but the orange balls stay the same. We've still got 4 orange, so we put 4 like so. If we go back to the beginning of the situation, we've got 4 out of 10 here. Okay, We've chosen an orange ball, so we've chosen that, it's disappeared. So we've now got 3 orange balls left out of 9, but the white balls going down this path hasn't changed and this is a 6 here. Now we can check we have the right answer, because if we add pairs of branches, they always have to add up to 1. So 5 ninths plus 4 ninths is equal to 9 over 9. OK, that all works out nicely. And then finally, 6 out of 9 plus 3 out of 9, well, that's equal to 9 out of 9 as well. So all those pairs of branches should add up to 1. And now our next question is, find the probability that John chooses a white ball. This is where the mark scheme is actually incorrect, so I'm going to go through the correct answer here. To choose a white ball, we have three possibilities. We can either choose two white balls, because that includes choosing one white. Okay, we've always got probability of white and orange. And we've also got probability of orange and white. Okay, now I'm going to take the question to understand that choosing a white ball, it doesn't matter if you choose two of them, as long as you choose at least one white ball. That's my understanding of the question. Okay, so the question will be, should be a bit clearer, in my personal opinion, but I'm going to take it as that. If it's choosing one white ball, if it said one, then I would only choose these two middle ones instead. So, as we go through this, um, when we work out a probability, we multiply along the branches. So we get 6 out of 10 times 5 out of 9. That's equal to 30 out of 90. I'm not going to simplify. Okay, I'm going to leave these numbers as is. I'm going to do the same process here. 6 over 10 times 4 over 9. 
which is 24 out of 90. You can use your calculator for this. And then lastly, probability of orange and white, that's going to be 4 over 10 times 6 over 9, which is actually the same as what we just did, which is 24 out of 90. And now we add those together, the three possibilities. And if we add those together, we get 78 over 90. So I'm going to leave my answer as a fraction. So the key thing for this question is choose a white ball. I am taking that because the mark scheme is incorrect as two is absolutely fine. If you said one white ball, I would then only choose these two middle instead. The way we work this out is we multiply along the branches, okay, to work out the individual probabilities, and then we add between the branches to give us our final answer. Okay, all good, let's keep going on. So we're on to now question three. So we're gonna do some chi-square testing at this point. So in the kindergarten, children aged three to six years old were asked to select their preferred toy and they were given a variety of different toys to choose from, and we have some data. Our first step is to find the value of k. Well, this is essentially a two-way table question. So notice here that all of these have to add up to 45. So the part at the bottom, the bold part. So then we need to think, okay, so eight plus 16 plus 15, if we add those together, we're going to get the value of 39. You can use your calculator for this if you need to. And then what do we do to 39 to get to 45? Well, we're gonna add six. So our value of K is gonna to equal to six. Notice it's a one mark question, so I don't really need too much working here. Now, I'm gonna use my GDC quite cleverly here. I'm gonna ignore the number of degrees of freedom because your calculator can actually tell this for you when we do part C, which is use your graphic display calculator to find the chi-square statistic for this test. So the way we do this is to use a matrix. So I'm gonna come out of this, okay, and we're gonna make this a bit smaller. So you can see what I'm doing on my graphical calculator. Okay, that'll be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this a matrix. So the way we do that is go to menu, matrix and vector, create and create matrix. Now we need to see how many rows and columns we want. Well, we ignore the bold numbers here. So we're going to have four rows and three columns. So we type that in and we're going to put in all those numbers. So we've got 28. Okay, we don't press enter straight away. Uh, 34, see my eye size is good, hopefully. 12, we're gonna type in eight. Now we worked out K to be six, 16, 15, 18, two, 24, and 20. And we have our matrix there, all written ready. Now what we're going to do, I'm gonna press enter, so I have my matrix. I'm now going to press Control and Store, and I'm going to store this matrix as A. So every time I press A, I get my matrix that I've generated there. Okay, that's very important for chi-square testing. At this point, we go to Menu, we go to Statistics, we go to Stat Tests, so right at the bottom, and this is going to be a chi-squared two-way test, okay? Goodness of fit would be a different kind of question, so please do look that up. I'm sure I'll be going through it in due course on the YouTube channel. So I'm gonna to go to a chi-squared two-way test. Notice we've got uh, data going two ways. Observe matrix, well, we can just choose the matrix that I've given the title of, I've just called it A. We press OK, and you'll see it actually generates all the values that you're looking for. Now, the first thing to notice, it gives you what's called DF. That stands for degrees of freedom. So you kind of get that for free, okay, just by using a chi-square test. So we have DF is equal to six. So we can write that down, draw. So degrees of freedom is six. The other way you can work it out is take one less than the column, and one less than the row, and then times them together which gives you three times two, which is six. So that's another way of working it out. And it wants you to find the chi-square statistic, 
which here is 18.146. Now, generally speaking, on AI exams, we want you to round always to 3SF, so it's going to be 18.1. However, what we're interested in for part D is the p-value. So our p-value, I'm going to write this down, is 0 0.00587, dot, dot, dot. And now I'm going to use that for the last part of the question. So now we need to state the conclusion for this test and give a reason for our answer. Well, now we need to look at the significance level. So this is written here. So our significance level is equal to 0 0.05. Now, rather than using the chi-square statistic, I really recommend for all the statistical testing questions, you always look at your p-value instead. So we're going to compare that with the significance level. Notice that 0 0.00587 this one's actually less than our 0 0.05. It's actually less than 0 0.05. Okay, and this means then that we reject H0. And usually at this point, we actually want to write some kind of context sentence. Okay, so if we reject H0, then we want to just copy H1, so not independent of H. So we do need to write a context sentence just to show that we know what it means when we say reject H0. Okay, like so. So just go through that step again. We look at the p-value. We see the p-value is less than the significance value. Therefore, we reject H0. We accept H1 the toy is then not independent of H. Okay. Now the way the mark scheme did it, just to show you the other way you can approach this, is look at the chi-squared value and see if that's above or below the critical value. But if you use the p-value, always check if it's less than the significance level, then you reject H0, you accept H1. Okay, then you will not get confused. Okay, so use that p-value it will help you. Right, I'm going to stop the video there. So there's the first few questions on the test. Again, please like, please subscribe. And if you want more videos like this, watch it and share it with your friends. It really, really helps grow the channel. All right, bye-bye for now.